Welcome back to Castle Motors. We have a lot of ground to cover today, so we're just going to get right into it. At the end of the last episode, we saw that our sales are doing pretty terrible. We have three models, which are close to the minimum factory uptime, which means that people can start buying the cars. And uh, we're starting to build up a lot of cars just sitting in stock. Apparently we have, for example, uh, 181,000 Kalamegdan 1982 models sitting around that never sold. In fact, I'm going to scrap those immediately. Now I'm not sure uh, if the competition's just fully caught up with me, or if I've been relying on a completely broken market model this whole time, and changing most of my cars require 100% of the price for pre-orders has uh, fixed it, per se. But uh, the first thing I need to do, I think, is set some reasonable prices for these uh, existing cars that aren't selling so well. And then I'm going to launch into the new models we're going to make. And after that, it'll be time to do the facelift, which we'll probably kind of skip through. But first, Seapai, or Gardero first. This car is selling at a 20% margin. I don't want to go lower. We're just going to have to hope the facelift sells better, I think. The Seapai. This thing is selling at 80% margin. And, uh... Yeah, that's not, not selling too good. Let's bring that down to 30%. Drastic difference. Uh, total price goes from 15k to under 11k. Let's see how that does. That's our, our little SUV. The Basilic, our muscle car, is selling at 120% margin, which is pretty absurd. Let's bring it down to 80. It's another 5k discount. Kalamegdan, which is our uh, minivan, I recall. And I can also get a big discount. And the Barbican gets a discount as well. About two and a half thousand off. It's still our best seller. And we will see as we advance the timeline how those go. But our new models, I want to start designing those right now. And the other ones will get the facelift done after we advance time a little bit and unlock standard level CD players. Now the request that we're seeing is we have to do something in our aluminum factory is to build a supercar. And a good body would be this kind of stock car looking thing. I think that makes sense for our brand. So, all aluminum panels. You can go carbon fiber if you really want to make it crazy. And uh, a first, or no, no monocoque, actually. I think that requires steel presses or aluminum presses either way. Does it? I don't remember. It was space frame, anyway. This is the hand-built way of making the car in our small factory. Actually, if you recall, our, our small factory with the throne, right? We really need to get that making something else, because last episode, I tried to shut it off, and I just couldn't shut it off. Uh, and now we have... About a million pre-orders there, which we have to pay back. Very unfortunate. We also have advanced high strength steel, which is a lot more expensive, but it's lighter and stronger. Uh, the main impact on that is safety ratings, although the weight helps a lot for supercars as well. And to go with tech we're somewhat familiar with, we're not going multi-link or push rod. Those are the, the really cool suspensions you might want. We're going double wishbones on both sides, which we already use sometimes for our front axles only. And I think that'll be good enough. Okay, after exiting the game and remaking the vehicle ten times and stuff like that, it looks like if I choose AHS steel for whatever reason, I get stuck loading forever. So, AHS steel is just not going to be an option for us. Sorry, guys. Back to your scheduled programming. Gotta put the good engine in here.
Gotta give it some speed. Yeah, so it's a tricky spot. If I make it plus two rear seats, it's a lot less desirable to supermarket. But get some GT, GT premium interest. Might even be a job for two variants. Okay, now we're getting somewhere on the tuning. I can, as always, come back and fine tune suspension a little bit later. But with our decisions here, we're looking at pretty competitive for both Super and Grand Touring Premium, which is a good market score for us. And some Muscle Premium. Now if we look at the market sizes, you'll notice that Super is only 668 buyers per month in the whole world. And Grand Touring Premium is still less, but... You know, adding them both still doubles it or so. And the budgets are pretty similar. There's also Muscle Premium, which is a lot, a lot cheaper. And, uh, of course, it's always possible that our car will end up more in that price. I don't usually sell extraordinarily expensive automation cars, but I guess we will see. We're gonna save ourselves a lot of engineering time on this electronic stability control here by cutting down the cost. I think it's a little bit of an early unlock for us. And we also haven't even touched traction aids, and it's just a massive engineering time cost in the first place, so I think that'll be the right decision. We can safely slap a couple points of quality on the interior as well. Uh, a lot of the times you go for handmade instead of luxury. But uh, that helps us on the downsides. It helps us balance it out. Brakes landed pretty much right on the dot, just from my guesswork. We have no brake fade and just about max grip. Yeah, no, I can't improve on this. Not really. Better leave it where it is before I mess it up. As for tires, uh, we are running staggered tires some alloy wheels on here and I also notice the uh, material cost or our, our cost of tires right so because we have a top speed of over 186 miles an hour or so we're at 200 miles an hour we're looking at uh, tire costs of uh, yeah ten thousand dollars for the tires it's like half the cost of the car we can actually save a lot of money by limiting the speed carefully. At, uh... Yeah, honestly, not that big of a uh, score hit. I think it's worth saving the $6,000. You can see 17000 versus 23000 by uh, limiting our top speed here a little bit. It also gets us a better 0 to 60 time. I think that the, uh... Do I want to go all-wheel drive with this? Maybe I do. Yeah, I don't. Cheaper rear wheel drive. It's sportier. Ah, yeah. But I want to. I want to make the tires not staggered. See, the fronts are very slightly narrower than the rears, and that makes them cost like 25% more or something. But of course, when I do that, the suspension tuning goes all out of alignment. I can correct by putting fatter tires on there, but we're still, and eh, that's still not a graph that I like to see. Let's see, let's get rid of all the camber on the front, bring some camber back to the rear. We're at 1.1 cornering G, I'm not sure it was before, they liked it slightly more. I think there's a good compromises, we're saving some money, we're uh appealing to a broader market here. If I can get the car within the price of Muscle Premium, which I believe only took in as like $60,000 or so, yeah, then 
this will be a great seller, I'm sure. And we can get a little more market score by spacing out the wheels. Which gets us a better 0 to 60 time. Or, sorry, spacing out the gears. So we're at 6.1 seconds, 0 to 60. That's not bad. But I think we can do better. That's going to come back to the engine here. So, this is our high revving 5.1 liter turbo version of the Grand engine. I think I might need to try and tune this thing to make a little more power earlier. Also, huh. oh, here's an interesting thing. So this massive change in market score you see, Super goes from 197 to 149 when I just choose premium gas. You wouldn't think a supercar that would really be a problem to use premium gas instead of regular. Well, that brings us back around to the market screen here. It's selling to all markets currently. If I just take Arcana out, we see some pretty different changes in score because they don't have the fuel availability. I think I'm going to try and focus on, you know, everywhere but Arcana for this. And we can see, in fact, our car is scoring a little more towards the GT side and less towards Super. That's because the whole time I was designing this thing earlier, it was more of a supercar by Arcana's standards, which are low. So, what can we do to get more power out of this engine? Can we run it richer? Yes, we can run it a little richer. Don't want a performance air intake, it's probably too loud or too unreliable or something. And now we see, when I change between regular and premium gas, uh, there's, there's no effect on the markets. So we can get a little more power out of this baby. Now, of course, we're kind of hitting a, a limit on our red line here. Just without blowing up the whole engine. We could make a lot more power if I could get another 1,000 RPM out of this thing. But I just can't without breaking the pistons, because it's so damn large. I'll hold on to this graph. What if I were to really cut down on the stroke? Let's make it a... keep all the bore and make it a 5 liter. We're missing out on not too much power, actually. Although we also haven't gained as much as I'd hoped in terms of red line. If I let it go all the way, we peak at 6,500, I think it is, or 6,400. 568 horsepower, not bad, but uh, hard for us to use. Although we won't be selling a large number of these cars, I don't want to have too low reliability because it'll hurt our company's reputation a little bit. I actually get more performance index if I take the uh, cam profile down a little bit and start making power earlier because, you know, just losing so much power off of the top end there. And I guess then for the turbo, I want a little smaller compressor maybe. The markets actually say they don't like that even though the performance index is increasing. It may be a wheel spin kind of thing. <sighs> yeah, we lose a couple market points on this variation. Making more horsepower. I'm not entirely sure what it is they don't like about it as much. But I'm going to go with this version of the engine. And maybe I need to change the gearing a little bit. No, that's not it. I like that right where it was. Oh. Since we're rear wheel drive, I definitely need the LSD. I'm going to go with the viscous version, which is considerably cheaper. Although not quite as nice. 
it's more comfortable too, which leans us more towards that GT and muscle area. So yeah, I think that'll about do it. That's our uh, our supercar. Let's see, do I dare put like a quality on this? Yeah, that's a chunk of desirability for all of two months engineering time and four production units. Yeah, we can make it plus two chassis quality. We'll get a good design on this. Engine, I think, is about maxed out. Get barely more fuel efficiency in there. So yeah, I think a 170 competitiveness in Super and a 232 in GT. If this car doesn't sell well, I guess it really just shows you that these aren't the numbers you need to follow anymore for this version of the game. Ah, oh, man, that's ugly. But it's perfect for us. I need to pick a good color. Ah, uh, yeah, I think that'll do. That gold color seems like a real 90s supercar kind of color. So this is the... Now we'll get to the name in a moment. First, I have to figure out the factory situation. Hopefully it's not too difficult here. We have a lot of production flags you can see here. Two no mass productions and one limited production. And this small factory is definitely going to be more efficient than a larger one. And in fact, it helps if I reduce the automation to a target of, wow, about 30. Still getting more trims per month made. Keep that maximum tooling quality, keep that no QA threshold. That's all good. I don't think anything in here. I'll put a maintenance facility on here, that's not going to hurt. But nothing's going to make more cars, really, other than, well, pay our workers more. People who work in the supercar factory are real professionals, get 20% more pay. It doesn't hurt our production costs that badly, it gets us more cars out. And this, this is the tricky side of making a supercar. We end up with 100 engineering time, and our biggest area is, well, chassis is a major one, and our biggest area is driver's assists. That's that electronic stability control. So you can see my putting a minus four quality on that actually had a big effect on saving time. But I don't want to get rid of that because if I can get familiarity in that area, I can use it on my regular cars much more easily. So first off, maximum funding. We have cash to burn on this. Reliability? Sorry. That's going down. A lot. Process. If I reduce this slider, we waste more materials. Makes it faster and easier to build cars. They just cost more per. So, more car output at a higher cost. Sure, let's do a little of that. And tooling. Get it more hand-built relatively. So if I bring us down to five years, we're still making 700 cars. What I'd really like to do is reduce the pressure some. To say 30... 25? Yeah. That'll get us even more familiarity from any new tech we're working on with this car. And that's that's a big part of supercars, how they roll into our company. We want to get familiar with the tech. And I'll mix that with even less tooling. So there we go. Our final multiplier is a negative 10% reliability multiplier. And uh, we'll have it done in five years. In fact, I think we can see here, I'm pretty sure this engineering time number it does care about the sliders, but it's different than our final number here. So I think this 70 months, it was without familiarity, and the 60 months is with familiarity. We're not saving a ton of time on this car because we're using a bit of weird stuff like the rear double wishbones and stability control. But that's all well. Now, the engine factory... We're going to have to come back to this in a minute, because as I update these Grand engines, I'm going to want to update our Basilic, our regular muscle car. I'll figure out that's making enough after I've done the Basilic facelift. Ooh, and how much do I want to sell this thing for? Well, 
I estimated $60,000 gets us you know, most of the markets we want. So let's leave some room for the dealers to make money and sell it for 56000 uh, 53000 Yeah, we'll try that. And, well, for now, I'll put that 100% pre-order deposit on there. And I don't think I need a loan for this. I almost forgot to keep it Turkish. The car, car, or something, is our name, as suggested by the Bay 12 forums. Now, before we quite get continuing, the Basilic needs a facelift. It's been 10 years we've been selling this car. Or 10 years since we designed it, anyway. So what's our 1993 engine going to look like? Well, being muscle, what they tend to like is uh, not a lot of power, but a lot of displacement. Keep it mildly tuned. And we can actually see, uh, whew, we are not competing very well. Looks like in the last 10 years, muscle buyers have shifted towards cars which are much larger, much better fuel economy, much less sporty. Hmm, these don't sound like muscle cars at all, actually. But apparently something's out-competing us. Maybe it's time to get some witchcraft in here. Let's see, do they like variable valve timing? Save them some gas. Well, Utility Premium certainly wants that on here. And that is part of the market for this car. Being that our Basilic is the muscle pickup truck. Now we've pretty well fallen out of favor with the muscle market in this car. As far as the competitiveness is showing me anyway. So we're going to have to do something to make it a little better. And something seems to sound like it needs to be more comfortable and easy to drive. So what do we got for interior here? We can get a CD player. Which apparently makes it more expensive at no benefit. So I don't know. Maybe not. We like making it a 5 speed. I definitely like some more gear spacing. Honestly, I don't know whether it's so close together in the first place. Or maybe something's made us, you know, less prone to wheel slippage. I forgot I made this thing all-wheel drive. And I do prefer it that way. I don't know exactly why. I just can't see it reflected in the stats. This utility goes down as I push my drivetrain to the rear a little, and I don't know why it goes down when I push my drivetrain to the rear. I thought a rear power bias would be what you want in a truck like this for sports and utility, but oh well. There's a lot of interest in electronic stability control, that's for sure. Even at a big negative quality, which is what I'm going to need in order to actually sell it. Honestly, I'm lucky that putting negative 6 quality on here doesn't seem to affect my reliability at all. Depending on what's going on with this, I can probably get the advanced 90 safety in too. I aim for five years on this facelift, so it will be done at the same time as the uh, supercar. I can sync up the engine development. A little narrower tires. Saves us some gas. Gets us a little better handling, apparently. We can pay it for some fancy alloy wheels. Yeah, I have no idea what kind of car is outperforming me so bad in muscle. Because if I'm looking at just the percentages here, the demographic desires, it would look like the biggest areas that matter, that's, uh, well, I guess top speed and displacement, I can't really see the comp uh, competition yet. So basically, it has like a massive engine. But uh, more prestige, more sportiness, more drivability than the... the best-selling muscle car, whatever that is. This apparently is the suspension setup that they like. There's some interest in semi-active sway bars, whatever those do. 
fact, my suspension all around might just be kind of stiff. There's two clones of the utility market on here. I'm not saying utility, utility, premium. It's just two utilities. Every time I play, I find a new bug. It's a good thing I'm recording. Can't unpin this utility. It's stuck here. It may be that what I'm really missing is some extra seats. But that's just not a front I can compete on. So if I make it a bench seat, unfortunately, uh, that's just considered to be completely unacceptable in automation. Honestly, by the time it was the 90s, even in the United States, you don't really see that anymore. Man, 75. This is about the best I can do with this thing. I'm going to keep producing it for now and, uh, you know, have to replace it next episode, maybe. Looks like I'll have enough engines. I need to save a little time. I can just add some pressure. No problem. And maybe I can make up some desirability in the engineering over here. If I can take a lot of pressure off. Actually, this being an ESC car, a lot of pressure off so we can get that familiarity for our next generation of cars. Get some reliability in here. Hopefully that'll make them a little cheaper. At a... 17,000... Yeah, see what sells. Oh, and don't forget, 100% pre-order deposit. Alright, so those are them. Ready to go. We will sign them off. No loan needed. Now our other four models all have to be updated at the same time because they all use the same engine. And that's the mill you've been using for a very long time, it might actually be time to consider replacing something a little more modern. And the Barbican, our utility delivery SUV type vehicle, it's about due for replacement in general as well. Now a popular choice for that option would be this jeep style body right here which i like a lot but the only downside is it has got a proper delivery variant so i'd be relying on some other model to sell delivery which is still our biggest selling market that kind of scares me on the other hand some of these are just ghastly looking and to find anything that even looks decent i pretty much have to go all the way back to Yeah, 1985. So, yeah, it's. I'm looking at year 2000 cars, and I have to go 15 years back just to find the right combination of SUV utility delivery in one vehicle that I want. And that's going to hurt me with a body year penalty. Now, just for the record, I can look at the. Just for the record, I can look at the Barbican. I can see what kind of penalty it's got. So this thing has a original body from what year? 1975. And we can see in the markets we have a 1.7 2.8% body age penalty. That's not too bad. But I really would like to avoid that kind of thing. I think that I want to set that timer back by 25 years rather than 10 years. I can have an advanced body for once. So I'm going to accept that our new uh, model here won't have delivery variant and we'll just take the risk. Ladder frame and all steel. I can consider maybe galvanized or treated steel too since those uh Get me some environmental resistance. I also decide if I want to have double wishbones in the front or solid axles in the front. Just going based off of the record of our, our barber can we're replacing. Sounds like solid axles around might be the choice for us. 
But I can come back to that and revisit it. Now the mill. What do I have here? Three and a half liter single overhead cam four valve? Nah, I honestly still don't see a, a big need to replace it. Except that, oh, we're on single point EFI. Ugh. I thought I, uh... I could have sworn that I went to multipoint at some point here. Yeah, no, that display is just bugged. It's got multipoint. We're, we're relatively modern. No direct injection yet. That can wait a little while. Now I have the option of going to low friction cast pistons, and that's going to save us a lot of fuel. Get another 2% thermal efficiency just by clicking on that. So I think that's what I'll do, and despite the low friction cast gets a lower top end than the regular cast, I can afford to bump up the RPM just a little bit here, I think. And it's not hurting our reliability too much. It gives us a real wide power band. It's time to modernize with some reverse flow mufflers, with this thing quieter. Put kind of a point of quality on there. In fact, I can get rid of the negative quality on our fuel system for sure. Even go to plus one. That'll save some gas. And then added compression, you know, with 26%. So we're up a lot in fuel efficiency. I think I'm going to wait on our new model here to add any traction aids until the uh, vehicles I'm using to experiment with it are done. Then I can throw it on in a facelift, maybe. So right off the bat, we're looking at a pretty viable utility, heavy utility. Oh yeah, that's a cool, that's a cool shape for a vehicle. Ugh. We're looking pretty oversteer prone on the handling chart, but uh, there's honestly only so much I can do about that. I feel like I'm running into some weird effects where uh, increasing my ride height should help my... Uh, what's stat over here? Off-road, of course, and utility. Actually does by a lot, but uh, it hurts my... oh, practicality. Is this one of those bodies? Uh, doesn't seem like it. Some bodies, if you get the ride height too high, you go to your practicality and you get a big accessibility penalty. Here I'm getting a 2% accessibility penalty, which is not really a big problem. But for whatever reason, they prefer it to be much lower. In fact, there's a spot where it just snaps like 10 points. It's not a spot so much, but the number that's going down utility goes down as my ride height goes up. Which is just not what I expect. So it wants to be as low as it possibly can. Let's see, I need better brakes. Environmental resistance wouldn't hurt. How much is that galvanized steel gonna cost us? It's a factory add-on, so I have to keep that in mind. But I think that's a good look for us. Weather resistant. And every variety of utility wants shorter gearing. In fact, what they really want seems to be all-wheel drive. Except for heavy utility. Because then they can actually handle the shorter gearing without spinning the tires all the time. It's not good for fuel economy, but you know, it is what it is, I guess. And they always, arbitrarily, want 100 gear spacing. So that seems to be the gearing here. Geared towards... Well, it red lines at 94 miles an hour, but it does it with lots of power to spare. There's also a weird point where wheel spin is induced by a longer gear, which seems there's some value. It's choosing which gear it's in, which is dumb. It looks like there's a lot of interest in a uh, well, either a cheaper interior or a more expensive interior. This is the compromise, but I may want to make two variants instead.
Now, there's only one other meaningful body type here, which is the SUV. There's also a two-door SUV variant, and I'm not sure that actually gives us any kind of benefit. I think having less doors saves a little weight, but uh, we're trying to sell a delivery. They still want, like, not to have windows in the back. This appeals to off-road. I'd like it to appeal to utility sport. Four seats in here. Now these guys really want the premium interior. Here's near I can get some score. It's like utility sport and off-road both like some chunky tires. I'm gonna keep going until they don't like it anymore. I'm gonna look at what it actually looks like. Oh yeah. That that's chunky. They still don't want any ride height though, for whatever reason. Seems like off-road is the main demographic for this. And they'd like a cheaper version once again. Just can't seem to quite get into utility sport premium. There is some interest for this version for electronic stability control. So again, you know, next facelift. Look into that. And I'm just not seeing... I don't think they're going to want the 3 liter for this. I guess I can see if they do. Yeah, no. Nobody wants the 3 liter. I'm going to go, and if... It's not too bad, I'm going to come back and make a cheap version of each one. With the less nice interior. Now, if we're replacing the Barbican... Ooh. Barbican's in two factories. I don't know if this car really has the... Uh, mass appeal to hit like that. Lacking, again, its delivery variant. The galvanization plant in here. And engineering, we're looking at spot on five years. Now, how bad is it if I tweak the interiors? There, that's a naming scheme. So, utility base gets standard and a basic set player. So there, I made sure to use some of the same ones. So you have two entertainment systems engineer and two interiors engineer. Got to click through the factories again. And that had four months, which I can make up for with this funding. In fact, we have some extra reliability in there, too. Now, I've got some other facelifts to do before I can go ahead. So the garter rope. That's going to be a tricky one. I need to figure out why this thing is not selling, like, basically at all. And quick. Taking the negative quality off of this engine. Now, if we set our target market to Arcana, we can see that it's not super affordable, but it is appealing. For utility, off-road utility, you'd think this car would be selling. You can get electric power steering in here and get a couple more miles to the gallon. I'm seeing in some markets a low practicality penalty. Which I can solve with a third seat, making it a bench. I think... I can't picture three people going inside this car. I'm not going to do that. Otherwise, being dirt cheap as it is, I basically don't see why it shouldn't be selling. Get a little longer gearing. Ah, yeah, it needs a locking wheel hub. I missed out on that, and that's an opportunity. It costs us a little more, but uh, it'll be worthwhile. I think the off-road score matters for basically all markets in Arcana due to the country taste. We're even almost willing to buy it all-wheel drive. The delivery version of this thing requires so much front sway bar to stay under control. It's ridiculous. In fact, what I should be doing is I should be spacing these wheels out. That might help. There, adding two-inch spacers looks a little less insane. It hasn't really made my handling graph, you know, not bad, but 
whatever. So there, yeah, for, again, Arcana, delivery scores are great. This thing should sell. It may be the only reason I haven't been selling this car is because I hadn't marketed it. Now, the family version here seems to be only acceptable for family utility budget, which can't actually afford it. And, uh... The, the only demographic that can actually afford it and actually wants it is the passenger fleet. So that's that's not a great sign. Low comfort and body type penalty. Low comfort, low prestige. What body type is this? Now it helps if I gear it out. It even helps if I put a manual locker. Even the taxis here want manual lockers. Even more wheel spacing. Yikes. Yeah, this thing still handles like a death trap. Kind of no matter what I do to it. So, staggered tires it is. That's not really what you want in this kind of car at all. But, uh, you know... Oh well. In fact, I shall honestly revisit and see if the other ones want staggered tires. So there, better scores with staggered tires. Put the sway bars around. I think this thing should be able to sell. Of course, I'm not updating the factory until it does. Make it bigger anyway. 30 months? Sure. And coming up, these things will be even cheaper than they were before. Because my. I'm still putting a 20% margin on it, but my estimated cost is lower without the tooling. And still, still always 100% deposit. Now, lastly, before proceeding, I do need to get my other mill engine cars on track to update. So let's start with the CPI. Overall, no crazy changes. I'm adding a uh, utility variant to the spread of the CPI. And we'll be selling it. <laughs> Factory deserves a QA testing. For whatever reason, their QA threshold's just not doing well. And the mill engine's on a five-year plan, so... So will every other car. So you can see the downsides here, as I update the Calamagdan, of having... Uh... Too fancy entertainment. This is from our R&D. So, compared to a cassette, a premium CD player costs $2,000 more, and that's all material cost. That's just my going outside the company, buy a CD player. And if I reduce the quality, material cost goes up to down. So if you have advanced entertainment systems because of R&D, your cars are just horribly expensive. There's an update planned so that they won't overwrite each other. And we'll still be able to choose, say, you know, older stuff. It's obsolete. So you can avoid this if you have a lot of R&D. The Calamedan isn't getting a lot of changes because even Family Utility Premium just doesn't want to pay, apparently, for fancy suspension bits and flexibility control, but not that much. So, all it's getting is another transmission speed. And it's getting a delivery van. This is not quite heavy delivery friendly. I don't think. That is the base design of this car. What it's gonna have to do for us 
Yeah, trailing arm, that's actually terrible for delivery. It doesn't get a lot of load capacity compared to like a leaf spring. So we, we might be in a bind for our delivery markets to continue selling. But eh, yeah, it says it likes it. Even though it can only hold 522 kilograms max load. That's that selling trailing arm I was talking about. Horrible, right? And yet on the market screen, heavy delivery, 257 competitiveness. That, I, sir, I must disagree. That doesn't seem right at all. How can heavy delivery think that any car that can only hold half a ton of stuff at once is two and a half times as good as the average car in the market? Maybe because the NPCs just aren't making any. It doesn't compete against your own stuff, I don't think. Do they want, perhaps, a stronger rear spring to hold more cargo? No. No, they do not. They want softer. They want softer still. They want... They say they want soft springs. 370 kilograms. And it's a heavy delivery vehicle. What a farce. Oh, well. Sell it. I wanted to re-engineer the safety on this. It might not have been that great of an idea. Because it's now taking a long time to engineer. Or, hmm, that could be our problem. I yeah, changed it to 90s on one, I had A's on the other, so we're double engineering the safety. It's gonna go to 90s everywhere when it costs me. Honestly, if you have different selections between your trims, in my opinion, it should generate a warning. Because it can cause horrible engineering times. And yeah, now we have a lot more engineering time. I want to try and sell it at 40% margins, maybe. I'll come back and play with that later. I think that makes everything ready to fire off here. Therefore, before I quite sign off, I need to make sure I'm making enough of our engines. We're going to slap the big add-on buildings to our huge factory here. Look at this thing, it's a city. Let's see, now we're making enough engines? Still no. That medium factory is basically maxed out as well. I don't know why my recall chances are pretty high. A lot of the time I can just slide it to zero after the factory's experienced. But now I have to put it to like 90% to get it under 0.3, which is usually where I like to cut it off. Alright, five year plan for CPI, Kalamigdan, and our replacement, the Ardruzi, or the Barbican. I think. I'm not missing any cars. Take out a billion dollar loan or so and uh, we'll watch this happen. Five years. Let's see. We are not exactly making money. Never what I like to hear. But we're losing many millions per month. Did I take something out of my revenues all at once? I know my expenses went up because of engineering and everything. That little spike is me scrapping a bunch of cars we had seen a lot. Three months of old Basilix sitting around 7,500 vehicles in stock now uh, the rumor is just quiet recall this the rumor is that uh, at some point all these cars we have sitting in stock like 60,000 Kalanig Dance that I haven't sold that they will uh, start costing you money for storage so you want to avoid having too much stock 
Yeah, so I did a massive reduction of my margins, and I'm not sure if it's made all that much of a difference in my sales numbers. At least my revenue is about the same. We're starting to get lots of recalls, because some of my factories have been operating for too long without being updated. The Gardero will be done early, and hopefully it'll actually sell. Now it says I have infinite months of stock estimated of old garderobes. Yes, we have, yeah, like 400,000 sitting around. I'm just going to sell all 400,000 of those cars to the junkyard. That That is what you call failure of a car, or perhaps failure of marketing. And expenses are high again as we build the factory. So new garderobe, it's better, it's cheaper, we have some actual marking in our canna now, and it still is running the factory at the minimum shifts. To probably play around my factory shifts more. But we're just building up stock and they're not selling. That was my Arcana sales data. I am selling like a thousand cars total. In Arcana, and not necessarily the markets that I'd hoped to. My market awareness is growing, so my my advertising is working in Arcana, about like twenty percent. But I'm not seeing commensurate sales of my cars yet, fortunately. Revenues are just falling off a cliff as I think we sell out some of our older cars. High factory refresh costs, we'll see some of those. Cars in production that need mill engine. Uh oh. Here at what I screwed up soon. But 1998. Why are my expenses so high? Car production. So right off the bat, our new cars, the Arudzi. Is selling like crazy. Hey, that's good. Oh, oh, it's not the best, actually. Somehow I managed to set this thing at a 0% sales margin. That's cool. How about 50? Can we do 50? They're gonna be mad we changed the price, but oh well. I'd like to make some money on the sales of these cars, please. The Nicarar is selling like crazy, crazy. We got 10 months of pre orders. I'm gonna have to really increase the price of this. So instead of selling these things at 53,000, let's sell them at 64,000. 62,000? That'll do. Garderobe. It's just not selling. Let's, let's really make some razor thin margin here. 10%. Put these cars on discount. This is a car you can buy for under $5,000 in 1998. That's pretty good. The Celic, that's selling like crazy. Let's get at least a 50% margin on there. Kalamegdan. So the Kalamegdan is now selling very well. And it looks like the best seller is the delivery variant. Delivery cars continue to be our bread and butter, even without, you know, that. Uh, the Throne. Hmm. The Throne is cursed. I replaced its factory. I, I put a new project in its factory. That's where our Nicarars are being built now, our supercar. But the throne is a problem. People are pre-ordering it. I, I, just, I just don't know. I have no remaining stock to sell for scrap. I can't cancel it that way. Production restarted. Realize there's no factory. Factory utilization. What did I do? Has the throne been in two factories? Ah, no, that's been my problem. 
I was trying to shut down the small factory that builds the throne. There was a medium factory as well. Let's put that medium factory on the Karar production. Right away. Have to reduce the automation because it's very handmade. That'll get us a lot of sales. Hopefully. So we'll have that thing selling car ours in five months. Expenses are going wild. I guess we pay back our pre-orders, finally. We've been building up for like 30 years. And we're making a narrow profit again, momentarily. 1999. The Nakara, I think, is now made in both factories. It's still selling out in both factories, so that's great. And at a higher margin. It says it's losing us money, but I don't know how. Because we're selling them at a double price, and they're selling like crazy. The garderobe is still selling like shit, even though it seems to imply that it shouldn't be. Supply is selling like crazy. Basilic like selling like crazy. It's good the supply is selling well, because we had not been selling out of it before. By selling that thing at. Oh, C Pi is at 0% margin. Gets me every time. 50% will do. So, whatever caused most of our cars to slump in sales, we're getting over it just by updating them with similar stuff and reducing our prices a bit, although having reduced our prices alone didn't solve it earlier. So really was the reason for everything to stop selling before? I don't know. But we're selling cars great right now, and we're, um... Well, we're losing money. I guess maybe that'll change... There we are. Now we're making money. After I fix the prices a bit. The car is slowing down. I may have overdone the pricing on that. Not the worst thing to happen, though. So, yeah. That's that. We are now in 1999. We are back in the green. We've got a new mainline car. Looks like a Jeep. We've got a supercar. And we've got a shipbox car that's still just absolutely not selling. Might need to replace it entirely with something else. In fact, our some of our other stuff is getting old. The Sea Pie and Calameg Dam, we may have more modern bodies we can use for those. Look at our monthly sales data in Arcana. A few people have bought our supercars. We are slowly, very disappointingly slowly, starting to break into normal markets. In Deluha, we've sold a few GT, GT Premium, that's our supercar again, and a few off-road vehicles. This is not a big market for that in Deluha. In Fruinia and Hevasia, our, our neighbor countries, they're a little poorer than Gasmia, selling lots of delivery cars, a few muscle family sport cars. Uh, a small chunk of city eco cars, which must be our garter robes, because those things get like 47 miles a gallon. So at least they found some kind of niche. And uh, a, a chunk of utility. And in Gasmia, of course, our home country, we're selling many thousands of utility and off-road cars. So that's just a massive market here, and we're doing great. Many, many thousands of delivery cars. We're now selling a lot of passenger fleet. I think that's mostly going to be Calamegdan minivans. Actually, look. Yeah, Calamegdan cheap version. We're selling some family cars. Again, probably Calamegdan commuters. And we're selling a decent number of muscle cars. Pony cars. That's our, our muscle truck, the Basilic. The, the sales numbers over here in Super and GT look small, but all of our, uh, you know, all of our thousand Icarars are going somewhere. In fact, yeah, a thousand. Where are they going? Look at the whole world. 
We're selling 20 supers, 72 muscle premiums, 57 GTs, 15 GT premiums. That's like less than 10% of our sales. So where are they going? Are they going to sport budget? Are they going to regular muscle? Are they going to family sport? They do have four seats. They can sell that, I think. Where am I competing that I wouldn't expect to with Nakara? I don't know. Where where are like the other 900 Nakaras going? We just don't know. It's a mystery. What is on the family sport? The Arudzi. Maybe I need to make a uh, Grand Engine version of our Arudzi SUV. See if I can sell that to the premium SUV markets. Family sport. But uh, that's that's definitely for next episode. It's been a long one. I don't know how long the episode's going to be. But I've got two hours and twenty minutes recorded. So, hopefully, if you're if you're still watching, thank you for watching this long, and telling me what we need to try next. Speaking of which, we need to show the new bodies. So, back in 1993, we had the year 2000 bodies unlocked, and now it's 1999, so we have up to 06. We've got this. Nissan Juke hatchback. That seems like it may fit up in our lineup somewhere. Oh, oh! I maybe want to make one of these. We've got the uh, the Hummer. That definitely looks like a Castle Motors car. That could be a luxury SUV or something. We've got uh, lots of plain-looking sedans. We've got a. Sixth generation Corvette looking coupe, which would have been a good choice for a muscle car if we had, or uh, for for a supercar for us if we had it earlier. Got uh, a sedan body that's just not up to the standards of the rest of them. Come on, guys. We've got some new SUV and pickup stuff going. It looks modern. Still no delivery variants off of these. We've got a 2.8 and a massive 3.1 meter people mover van, which could be a good new version of the Kalamegdan. And, uh, hey, maybe this ugly square could be a second attempt at the Gardero if we think we need a second attempt at it. So let me know what we need to see, what our good ideas are. We can get on the road to 1 million score. We're at 900,000 now. It should be no problem.